today we are talking about what happens when I take a figure, Megan, what happens when I take a figure and I double all its dimensions? What happens to the volume? What happens to the surface it's area? It's two times as big. No, it's not. So that's what we're talking about today. So let's look at these bags of popcorn. You're at the movie theater. What movie are you seeing? Um, got to <laughs> Right Alright, well you're seeing a movie and you're trying to decide between the small, medium, and the large. I'm not saying these are the actual dimensions. We're just looking at what happens when you double or triple the dimensions. Okay, so I'm not saying these are the actual bags of popcorn. Anyways, um, let's look at the height of these bags. What happened? 10 to 20, what happened? Doubled. Uh huh. So it went up by 10. And then 20 to 30. If I go from the small to the medium, I've doubled it. And if I go from the small to the large, I've tripled it. Now, what this lesson is hopefully going to teach you is that if you take the height and you double it, if you take the dimensions and you double it, so I've got a rectangular prism and I'm going to double every dimension, the volume doesn't get doubled. Because if you double the dimensions, you double the length, you've doubled the width, and you've doubled the height. So tell me how much more the volume is. How do you get from 500 to 4,000? Divide that. 4,000 divided by 500. If you take something and you double the dimensions of it, the volume is going to get 8 times bigger. Where did 8 come from? Let's do the area. How much bigger is the area? By, by 6. By four. Like by four, four, by four, four times bigger, two times four is eight. Two, four, so wait, two, four, eight. What? Hmm. So two. multiplying twice. Okay. The only thing missing is the six. Think one d, two d, three d. Think one d, two d, three d. Okay, so one. Okay, this is two to the one. What's four? Two. Two to the two. And that's the two, right? What's two to the three? Go to your calculator. Two, two to the three. 2 raised to the third power. 2 cubed. So that's 2, 4, 8. So that's how it works. If you so double the dimensions, you don't double the volume. You, uh, what's the word? Not quadruple. I don't know what the word is with 8. But you, the volume gets Something. affected by 8 to the third. <laughs> 1D, 2D, 3D. So that's the moral of that story. So go ahead and write it down. Oh. If two, I don't have any extras. I already gave them away to Brett and Omar. They took them. If two figures are similar, this is a brand new lesson. How could you put your head down? It's brand new. It's new stuff. If two figures are similar, then the ratio of their perimeters is a to b. The ratio of their areas is a squared to b squared, and the ratio of their volumes is a cubed to b cubed. So squared and cubed. This is to the 1, this is to the 2, and this is to the 3. So all we care about in this lesson is, hey, what dimension are we in, and what dimension do we want to be in? We've already done this lesson, but we did it with 2D. We haven't gone all the way to 3D yet. So that's what we're doing today. We're going all the way to 3D. Woo! 3D. Um, let's name some things that are 1D. Because everything that's area is 2D. Everything that's volume is 3D. But what things are 1D? Square. A square. Like no. in real life? No, like, um, like in our formulas. <coughs> Height. Yeah. Height is 1D. Give me something else that's 1D. Base. No, the base is an area. The capital B stands for area of the base. Length is 1D. What else? Width. Okay. I forgot my hand. Width, side, uh, circumference, uh, perimeter, radius, slant height, all of those are 1D. What things are 2D? Like faces. Anything with the word area in it. Surface area, lateral surface area, area of the base. And then the only thing that's 3D, the only thing that's 3D is volume. That's it. Nothing else can be 3D. All right, so let's see if we can fill in this table. Let's do the first row together, and then you'll do the next two rows on your own. 
So if the similarity ratio is 1 to 2, the ratio of the areas is going to be? 1. What's 1 squared? 1. What's 2 squared? 4. The ratio of their volumes is going to be, what's 1 cubed? 1. And 2 cubed, we already did this, is 8. Do you all know how to cube something? If you want to cube 5, you do 5, then you do that little carrot button, yeah. and then you do 3. Go ahead and fill out the rest of the table on your notes. <coughs> fill it out. And if you don't have notes, fill this out. Find somewhere on your quiz and fill this table out on your quiz. Did you do a quiz back or do you have some pictures on? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Dimitri, no, I can't call on you. Lucy, what is the ratio of the surface areas? Right here, this one. 9 to 25. Beautiful. Ashley, what's the ratio of the volumes? 27 to? Perfect. Very good. Uh-oh, the next column, next row, we have to go backwards. So this is the 2D column, right? 1D, 2D, 3D. How do you undo 2D? Square root. Very good. Square root. Megan, what's the square root of 49? 7. 7. Square root of 81? 9. 9. Okay, now we can find the 3D one. Julius, what's 7 cubed? It's going to be a large number. What is 9 cubed? What? It's supposed to be like this. 729? Okay, last row. That ratio is in the 3D row, 3D column. How do you undo 3D? Because if you undo 2D, it's square rooting. Cube root it. Cube root it. Do y'all know where cube root is on your calculator? No. Oh, no. Who can find it? This one? Start playing with your calculator. Find cube root. <gasps> Matt found it. Matt, where is it? <laughs> What'd you press, Matt? Math. Math. Mm -hmm. Everyone press math. Do you see it? Which number is it? Give me a number. Oh, four. Math four. Cube rooting is math four. So do math four and do them separately. Do math four, 125, and then do math four, 512. Kendall, tell me what you get. What? Oh. Math four. Okay, you did that. <laughs> you you did that so he just said a number. What was um, math 4 for 125? What? You have to do both of them? Five. You can get a ratio? Five. Five to eight. Five to eight. Okay, Brett, what's the ratio of their surface areas? 25 to 64. Yay! We have filled out the table. Woo! All right, so we know how to do it when it's in table form. Do we know how to do it when it's in word problem form? Let's find out. The edges of a large cube are four times longer than the edges of a small cube. How many times greater is the volume? Don't say four. Whatever you do, don't say it's four times greater. Because if the sides are four times greater, the volume is much, much, much more. A side, an edge, sorry, an edge. Is an edge 1D, 2D, or 3D? 1D. A volume, 1D, 2D, or 3D? 3D. 
4 is 1D right now. We want to make it 3D. How do you take a number and make it 3D? Cube it. Cube 4. The volume is 64 times bigger. It's not 12 times bigger. It's not 16 times bigger. It is 64 times bigger. A lot bigger. That's what happens when you go 3D. When you change the length, the width, and the height by 4. Ying Yu bought a rectangular box to display her doll collection. Interesting. So it's like a shadow box. She decided to exchange the box for a similar one that had double its dimensions. How does the volume compare? So she doubled the dimensions, and she wants to know what happened to the volume. This is just like the last problem. Um, where's the number? Area. Double. What number is implied when we say double? Two times two. So the dimensions, the dimensions got doubled. A dimension, is that 1D, 2D, or 3D? A dimension is like a length, a width, a height. It's 1D. So its dimensions got doubled. That's 1D. What are we comparing? Volume. So what do you want to do to 2? Cube it. Final answer? B. Yep. The volume is eight times as large. Not too bad. We're not even having to touch our formulas. Woo! That's fun. That's it goes, right? No, you don't say it. No, you don't have to do them now. Two similar bases have surface areas of 36 inches squared and 100 inches squared. What is their ratio? And then we'll get to B in a minute. So if their surface areas are 36 to 100, I want to know their similarity ratio. Surface areas, 2D. Similarity ratio, 1D. How do you go from 2D to 1D? Square root. Square root of 36. Square root of 100. That is a bad answer, though. We would never, ever, ever put that as an answer on a quiz or a test. Why not? Thank you, Ashley. You have to reduce your answers. You don't go to the store to buy three six loaves of bread. You buy, well you wouldn't buy half a loaf of bread either. But anyways, you don't order six thirds chicken nuggets at McDonald's. Surprise. You order two. You don't order six thirds. Okay. If the larger base has a height of 15, what's the height of the smaller base? What do we do with that information? <coughs> We're going to set up a proportion. We still don't have to touch our formulas. We don't have to touch them. Today's lesson, we don't have to do it. 3 is to 5 as, ooh, where do I put the 15? If I put it in the wrong the spot, I'm going to get it wrong. 15's on the bottom. It's the larger one. Very good. So it goes there. Cross multiply. Old news. 3 times 15 divided by 5. Melanie, what do you get? 9 inches tall. Last problem of the day. Oh, is this not on yours? Yeah. Should we do it? Yes. It's actually a quite complicated one. Actually, I want to do this one instead. Because I don't want to confuse them. I want to do this one instead. All right, so we've got two different soccer balls. This ball takes nine pumps to fill it up. So you attach it, pump nine times, and it's ready to go. It's ready to play soccer with. Um, it, is ha it has half of the diameter of the large ball. The large ball will take 18 pumps to fill up. Agree or disagree, why? So this one's half as big. This diameter is half this diameter. No, that's false. Diameter, 1D, 2D, or 3D? 1D, not 2D. A diameter is a length. It's a length. Oh, it is 1D. So if I take the 1D value and I'm doubling my 1D value, when I'm pumping up a ball with air, is that dimension, area, or volume? That's volume. 
So if I'm doubling the 1D thing, what happens to the 3D thing? It's It gets bigger not by 2, it gets bigger by 2 to the 3rd. We've already done 2 to the 3rd today. 8. The volume gets 8 times bigger. So it's not going to take 18 pumps. It's going to take... Oops, that's a 3. It's going to take 9 times 8 pumps. It's going to take 72 pumps. So that's what today's lesson is about. It's realizing, hey, am I in 1D, 2D, or 3D? It's not about using the formulas. It's about what dimension you're in. So I'm going to let you practice for 10 minutes, and then we have to practice something else after. For